In this tutorial, I'm going to show how to port an existing project to a different SDK and run on a new device using BridgeXR. BridgeXR is a Unity plugin from Parker Hill for building unified multi-device projects. It's an in-editor SDK manager which allows your projects to target a variety of VR and AR devices, platforms, and user interfaces. For this example, let's suppose you have a Unity VR project that uses the VRTK open source toolkit. VRTK is a popular, versatile, high-level VR toolkit. It's great for quick starting projects and hackathons. But imagine we need to decouple our project from the toolkit for a number of technical, business, or maintenance reasons. The goal is to isolate all dependencies on the VRTK SDK, extract them into a separate bridge, and then replicate similar functionality with a different SDK. In this demo, that'll be Daydream Elements. Okay, I've created a new Unity project and imported the packages for VRTK, Steam VR, Google VR, and Daydream Elements into my project and imported BridgeXR too. We're going to refactor one of the example scenes in VRTK so it's no longer coupled to the toolkit. Let's use example 5, Controller Basic Object Grabbing, and port it to run with either VRTK or Daydream Elements native toolkit. You can see the scene includes a number of root objects that constitute player rig, including the VRTK SDK manager and VRTK scripts for input. And there's a bunch of world objects with interactable components that define their interactable behaviors. Let's save it into a new working scene named 005XR. Part one, player rig bridge. I like to start with the player rig and the camera because that's where the input happens. One technique is to put all the SDK specific objects into a separate player rig scene and then load it additively when the app starts. So first we'll add a new scene and delete its main camera and directional light. And then we'll move the VRTK SDK manager and VRTK scripts objects out of the demo scene into here and then save it as player rig VRTK and remove the scene. Now we want to set up Bridge XR. So we know our project is going to target two different devices, VRTK and Daydream. So we will create two bridge IDs, one named VRTK Bridge and another named Daydream Bridge. Then we open BridgeXR settings and set the active bridge ID to the VRTK one because that's where we'll start first. Now we will bridge the player rig that we just created. First create an empty game object and name it Player Rig Loader. Then we'll add a BXR scene bridge loader component, add a bridge for the VRTK, and drag the player rig VRTK scene onto the scene slot. Let's also check the load on start and merge with active checkboxes. And we want to add it to the build because Unity requires it be part of the scenes in build in order to load it. Now when we press play, we can see that these objects are in the hierarchy the way it was before we separated them into two scenes. Next, we want to get a player rig for the Daydream Elements. We'll open up the Daydream Elements demo scene called Object Manipulation. When I hit play, 
you can see it run. You have a laser pointer controller on this platform and you can select objects and move them around with the laser controller. Like we did earlier, we'll create a new scene, delete the main camera and directional light, and then move the GVR objects and player into this player rig scene. We save the scene named Player Rig Daydream. Now let's reopen our working scene and look at the Player Rig loader. We'll now add a bridge for Daydream and assign the Player Rig Daydream for the Daydream slot. We go into our Bridge XR settings and switch over to Daydream instead of VRTK. Now, when you hit play, you can see that we're now using the Daydream player rig and the input is the Daydream controller with a laser. The objects in the scene are not yet interactable because they don't have the Daydream interactable components. So we'll do that next in part two.